سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن وقال الله تعالى ومن أحسن دينا ممن أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن واتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا واتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا صدق الله العلي العظيم الله أكبر 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 لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all praise is due to our creator our cherisher our nourisher and our sustainer we bear witness there's none worthy of worship but Allah we bear witness we believe in all the prophets and we bear witness that prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. Respected shuyukh, ulama, huffad, qurra, elders, brothers and sisters, respected youth, I greet you with the Islamic universal greeting of peace on this auspicious day of Eid in this beautiful, magnificent house of Allah, reverberating with the glorification of Allah. I greet you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This great occasion of Eid, Eid al-Adha, is a unique event. A unique event linked somewhat to the largest annual convention of faith. That annual Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca that continues to capture the attention of the hearts and the minds as we witness the synchronization of actions and purpose of millions of pilgrims, people of faith, at the same place, dressed in the same basic clothing, doing the same thing in the same manner at the same time. Uniformity, tranquility, harmony, and the splendor of simplicity. The Hajj is a highly communal act among millions of people from every part of the world, yet extremely personal, stripped of everything the individual is, makes one feel that you are unique in your own way, yet you are part of a multitude. Unique in that you are in the court of Allah, but also part of a larger community where your titles, your clothes, your provisions, your hairstyle, which distinguishes you, is not there anymore. You are in ihram, virtually in your coffin, in private communion with the Creator, in your personal supplication with the Creator amidst the multitudes of people, an absolutely unique experience indeed. Eid al Adha is also tied to a unique family, the family of Ibrahim, which include Hajar and Ismail, and by extension, Rasulullah and his family. And much of the rites undertaken by the believers during the periods of Hajj are symbolic reenactments of significant parts and phases in the lives of the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Nabi Ibrahim, the forefather of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, referred to in the Quran, Ibrahim, innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya, a most truthful one who was a prophet. 
kana hanifa muslima upright symbol of piety submitting to the divine this is the ibrahim alayhi salam the builder of the kaaba wa id yarfa ibrahim al qawaid min al bayt wa ismail the one who established on the foundation that was there the kaaba which we have today and by building the kaaba in makkah that ibrahim alayhi salam established the global identity the brand of islam with makkah as the capital of islam the center by which we are identified the symbol by which we become associated through which we are united and today this day we all pray towards that kaaba which he reconstructed and that is part of our identity because we are referred to as ahlul qibla the people of the qibla and thus in that way our faith is a lasting continuous continuation of the legacy of nabi ibrahim alayhi salam that prophet ibrahim alayhi salam who announced the hajj allah said to him as documented in surah hajj wa adhim fi an-nas bil hajj atuka rijalan wa ala kulli dhamir ya'tina min kulli fajr amiq proclaim the hajj of ibrahim and people will come from every part of the earth by every means of transport to witness the benefits thereof indeed when the quran refers to the millah of ibrahim essentially is based on the legacy of the model of ibrahim the household of nabi ibrahim and allah instructs us qul sadaqallah fattabi'u millat ibrahim hanifa speak what is truth manifest what is right follow the millah the way of the community of ibrahim who was ever true in his faith so virtually every aspect of the hajj commemorates the legacy of ibrahim and his family the tawaf of the kaaba built by ibrahim and ismail so the sa'i the commemorates the selfless run between safa and marwa the run of our mother hajar the pelting of the jamarat the ramil jamarat reenactment of ibrahim alayhi salam distancing himself from the enticement of shaitan and the qurban and udhiyah relieving i'm mean, rather reliving the sacrifice of ibrahim and all of these are parts of ibtialat the tests that ibrahim alayhi salam had to undergo of which allah says wa idh ibtala ibrahim rabbu bi kalimatin fa atammahun allah tested ibrahim with tremendous trials and he passed his tests with excellence which prophet and which person is there who's been asked so many things that are incredible extraordinary demanding sacrifice and patience at a level unparalleled before ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to leave his family in the desert remember when he went to the desert there was no zamzam there was no water at a place which he himself as allah documents inni askantu min dhurriyyati bi wadin ghayri dhi dhar'in 'inda baytikal muharram i have left my family of allah stationed them at a place which has no means of sustenance no water hajar had to run between safa and marwa searching for water until the zamzam gushed forth but he went there no water no plants this is the ibrahim alayhi salam who jumped into the fire was thrown into the fire and the fire wasn't cool he was thrown into the fire when the fire was burning the fire was subsequently made cool allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suspended temporarily the laws of physics to accommodate ibrahim but ibrahim did not waver at all this is the ibrahim whom allah said qulna ya naru kuni barda wa salaman ala ibrahim o fire normal fire the nature of fire is to burn but allah suspended the laws of physics as it happens at times at the will of allah allah is what is nature after all allah said kun and the unveiling of nature the unfolding of nature is the fayakun so the one who said kun can hold the fayakun as he wishes and then the slaughter of his son he was not told that the knife was not going to cut or that the goat will be replacing his son when he cut the knife was sharp when he cut his son was there this is the ibrahim this is the ibrahim who central to the hajj the forefather of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who thousands of years afterwards we reenact phases of his life and the life of his family in this hajj this largest annual convention of faith from all of the lessons in the life of ibrahim alayhi salam there are three points i want us to reflect upon because of all the prophets besides rasulullah whose sunnah we follow to the best of our ability 
We perpetuate the legacy in a practical way of Ibrahim salam more than of any other prophet. The entire Hajj revolves around him. We have a celebration on this day of Eid regarding the sacrifices and things that he made. We sacrifice as a symbol of Ibrahim salam on this day, thousands of years after he did it. So there are three points among the many points I want us to reflect upon, inshallah, about the legacy of Ibrahim. It's not only the doing the rituals of Ibrahim, going beyond the ritual, even beyond the spiritual, to be able to connect through history with Ibrahim alayhi salam, his mentality, his attitude, and then to perpetuate his legacy in a meaningful way. We live in an increasingly divided world, a world evidently hostile to people of faith and people of conscience. We are witnessing a contemporary wave of right-wing extremists, sometimes neo-fascist, authoritarian populists, who have been elected to power in many parts of the world. And this diabolical wave includes powerful people in key positions of authority, all in sync with the bigotry of Donald Trump's government in the USA. Among them, powerful extremists, like Narendra Modi in India, like Benjamin Netanyahu in occupied Palestine, like Abdel Fattah Hassisi in Egypt, like Boris Johnson in Britain, among others. And these are people in key positions of power, having access to key mineral resources of the world and military power, and that with tragic consequences. As we speak, a tragedy unfolding in Kashmir at the hands of the Indian army Kashmiris now, like the Palestinians, dispossessed, silenced, imprisoned, and dejected without any recourse or access to the protection of the United Nations or any other nation. The least we can do, of course, is not to forget them on this day. Because Kashmir's tragic reality demonstrates how skewed international politics and governments have become. Endemic moral corruption, selfish self-interest of the, of, the, of the wealthy and of the monopolists, and we see a manifestation of a world where leaders and their governments have been infested with oppressive, oppressive global politics brought into being and manifested by bigoted leaders who are in power. Contrast that, the situation we have ourselves now as world leaders that we see with the example of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Also a leader, pioneer of universalizing Tawheed. Prophets came at different places at different times. Ibrahim alayhi salam physically moved from Iraq or Turkey, from wherever he came in the Iraq region. He was in Palestine, Egypt, Mecca. Personally, not only did his message go there, he personally went, established places of worship, and so on and so forth. And all of the places he went to are centers of civilization, whether it be Egypt, whether it be Iraq, whether it be uh, 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 Mecca. All places where civilization emerged. This Ibrahim who built that Kaaba is Mathabat al a place towards which people would be inclined, and a place for peace and a symbol of security. Mathabat al wa amna. Ibrahim is the only scriptural figure who enjoys the unanimous acclaim of all three major monotheistic traditions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And the only one referred to by all three as the father, the father of the people of the book. Strive in the way of Allah as you are supposed to strive, with sincerity and discipline. Allah has chosen the righteous has not laid down upon you any hardship in the observance of your faith, the faith of your forefather, Ibrahim. In theory, this remarkable consensus among people of faith and his place in history should make Ibrahim salam an interfaith superstar. In a world where people within their faiths cannot cooperate, where people within their countries cannot govern with fairness, it makes him an interfaith superstar, a special resource in these times of conflict, a special example in these times of mistrust. His history constitutes a kind of multi-faith harmony, 
a case study for monotheism in action, a unifying symbol for people of faith in times of tremendous strife. Exemplary leadership and what it stands for. Not position of authority, but position of influence. Second one is forgiving and caring nature of Ibrahim alayhi salam. There's an incident in the Quran where he receives glad tidings of uh, a child to be born in his old age. He waited all his life, and now in old age he gets a son. And with that glad tidings, he's informed by his angels who are on their way to destroy the people of Lut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documents, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَ عَنْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الرَّوْعُ وَجَاءَتُ الْبُشْرَى يُجَادِلُونَ فِي قَوْمِ لُوتْ After he heard the good news and he was excited about this thing, he then went on to argue, argue in defense that let Allah not destroy the people of Lut. Sinful people, mind you, not just the people of Lut. They were going to be destroyed for their sins, for their corruption. And yet this Ibrahim, who never once tested Allah when Allah tested him, he never refused fire, sacrifice son, go to Mecca, never questioned. Yet Allah documents, he stood up and he said, Allah, don't punish the people of Lut. And in fact, the angels reprimanded him for doing so. But it shows, Inna Ibrahim al-Halimun awwahum munib. Ibrahim was clement, merciful, tender-hearted, one who consistently turned to Allah. So the legacy of Ibrahim, we learn from this, Never allow our indifference, never allow us to show or feel any indifference to the plight of people who are in trouble, whether it be in Kashmir today, or in Yemen, or in Palestine, or Syria, or the Uyghurs in China, or the Rohingya in Myanmar, wherever it may be. In fact, we look at his nature of giving, of caring, Udhiya, which is the most visible and entrenched practice by which we remember Ibrahim. What are we supposed to do with the meat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives four categories of people that he focuses upon. Four people, four kinds. Ba'i' are those who are troubled, those who are stressed, those who are in difficulties, those who have calamities, those who are refugees. Al-Faqir, those who are so burdened that their backs are broken almost. They can't take it anymore, they're overloaded. Crushed under the pressure of loan or debt. Qani'ah, those who are despite their despicable position, the position they find themselves in, the hard, difficult position, they don't ask. Content with a difficult condition, but you know they're suffering, you must find them. They will not ask. These are not the ones who ask. al muatar are those who are so depressed in such a situation that they actually ask. Though they are shameful, but they are forced to ask. From all of this we see, truly to be middle of Ibrahim, will have to emulate his personality, his caring nature, his compassionate nature, his inclusive nature, his thinking of the other. We have to look at how we enhance our social consciousness and our ethical responsibility, even in this time and in this country. We need to imbibe the attitude, the vision, the positivity, the commitment, the compassion. Because the middle of Ibrahim continues through our Rasulullah to us. Kuntum khaira ummah, ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of communities. Why? Not because you are chosen. Allah didn't say we are chosen. That is a Zionist concept. We're not chosen people. Believers are not chosen people. We're not chosen. Kuntum khaira ummah, ukhrijat linnas. You have been evolved for the benefit of humanity. Service of humanity. And therefore... We need to imbibe within ourselves the glorious characteristics of this in Ibrahim al Halimun Awahum Munib, this humble, beseeching Allah, soft hearted, ever repentant. Last point is the builder of the Kaaba. The builder of the Kaaba. This man calls people to this Kaaba. Now, who is inviting the whole of humanity? There are no people there, there's no community there. There's no food there, there's no water there. He gets up and he announces. Positive attitude, see. People, he realized, will come from the right, for the right thing in the middle of nowhere. People will come for the right thing in the middle of nowhere. People are still coming, more so than he could ever dream of. As we stand here, over three million people are in, in Makkah. 
from every part of the world by every means of transport, as he called. They come from every part of the world by every means of transport. That land which was ghairi dhi dhar'in barren, now the world comes to drink zamzam from that water, from that land. But also makes you realize the change of the reality of the world. Ibrahim built the Kaaba as a manifestation of Tawheed. It later became the center of shirk. Until the Rasul came and cleansed it. And therefore, we realize all it takes for evil to triumph, even in good places, is for good people to do nothing when they see wrong being done. How many of us are silent in the face of corruption in so much of the Muslim world? Are we also aware of the massive wave of change? We are all going to encounter the fourth industrial revolution. We are now entering the phase. The, the phase. We already have the capacity to be directly in touch with anybody anywhere in the world at any time by means of a device in our hand called the cell phone. What people dreamed of in 1950s are becoming the reality and beyond that of today. Artificial intelligence, 3D printing, merging technology with physical reality, digital spheres with the biological. And this revolution, its scale and scope and complexity will change so much and the transformation is likely to be unlike anything we have ever experienced in our history. Are we as an ummah engaged, uh, prepared to engage the reality, or are we still debating about issues we've been arguing over for hundreds of years? There needs to be a significant paradigm shift if this ummah, the middle of Ibrahim, needs, has to be relevant. Our youth are asking, can age-old religion, can age-old religion and God-centered devotion provide world-centric solutions to meeting the challenge of the contemporary age. Yes, we have to ask ourselves, where am I? Where could I be? Where am I in relation to myself? Where, where am I in relation to my community, to my creator, in relation to my near and dear ones, in relation to the key issues that affects my society? Where am I in relation to the world we live in? Do I have the vision, the resolve, the determination of Ibrahim to make things happen for the better before it even requires to be made. Building the Kaaba in the desert and millions come today to that. Therefore Allah reminds us, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينَ مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَوْ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ وَاتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Such is the incredible example of Nabi Ibrahim. His example, his life struggle still serves as a lesson. His sacrifice is still commemorated. His family is still celebrated. His call to pilgrimage is still responded to. The du'as he made, Rabbana atina fi dunya, are still recited by us. The structures he built are still places of worship. In fact, even where he stood the Kaaba, the, the stone he stood on, Allah said, وَاتَّخِذُ مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مصلى. Take the place where Ibrahim stood as a place for worship. He was indeed far more than just an ordinary man, more than even a prophet. Allah puts his best when he says, إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً Ibrahim was a nation by himself. In Ibrahim, he was a nation by himself, obedient to the divine, immaculately pure and devoutly upright. And therefore we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Salutation upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad as we send salutations upon Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. How ironic the world has gone. How crazy have we gone. How warped have we become? Ismail alayhi salam was saved from being cut. And his, Rasulullah's grandson was cut to Karbala by Muslims. The same neck was saved here. The great great grandson's neck thousands of years afterwards was cut at Karbala at the hands of Muslims. This is how far we've deviated in the name of Islam. We need to restore the positive mentality of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We need to embrace the inclusive culture of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We need to reignite the vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then we can truly perpetuate the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. May we and our families walk in the footsteps of the prophets. Living and relaying the message of Islam as the Rasul asked us at the Hajjatul Wida, at the final Khutbatul Wida, the farewell, farewell sermon that he gave, the Khutbah. We must do this as the Ummah of Muhammad. Continuing the legacy of Tawheed as middle of Ibrahim. 
And may we be blessed to be in the company of the prophets and the righteous and their families in the year after. We ask Allah to grant the hujjaj who have gone to the open court to be in the area where Ibrahim salam lived and walked, where Hajar ran, where Ismail drank the water, where the Rasul lived, and where he lies buried in those areas. We ask Allah to grant the hujjaj who have gone there, Hajj maqbool and mabroor. May Allah shower his inexhaustible grace and infinite mercy on all those who traveled to his holy open court in the Kaaba, which Ibrahim alayhi salam built. May Allah accept their prayer. May Allah forgive them their sins. May Allah illuminate the hearts of the hujjaj with insight, bestow upon them his guidance, grant them the strength of their highest moral conscience, fill their hearts with love and compassion, arm them with sincerity and dedicated determination to improve themselves, to be a means of value to the universal community of believers and a source of benefit to all humanity. O oh Allah, have mercy upon the hujjaj and forgive them and forgive us with them. O oh Allah, return them safely and as pure as the day their mothers gave birth to them as we stand in your house here, commemorating the thousand-year-old call of Ibrahim, the legacy of the one whom you took as your friend. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولله الحمد